Well, welcome back to another iteration of Continuum Meditations Discusses. It's been some time since our last meditation, so I wanted to make this video to catch up with you a little bit. I also wanted to check in because this episode of Continuum Meditations is unique among my collection. In most of my videos, I am commenting on others' work, Star Trek, Star Wars, various other shows. But this episode is different. This time I come to you to talk about my own work. Some of you may be aware, but most are likely not, that I am a published writer. For the past 12 years, I have been heavily engaged in creating my own science fiction serial entitled The Talaxion Particle. And in this video, I'm going to get into the inspiration, history, and plot of this story and give you some background on what motivates me to continue telling this grand tale that has sprung from my own imagination. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. I'll first start by talking about the inspiration for my story, what caused me to want to write the Talaxion Particle. And that inspiration essentially revolves around two men, one of whom is no longer of this world, and the other of whom I lost contact with many, many years ago. The first is my late grandfather, Benjamin William Pollard, or Grandpa Benny as I called him when he was alive. He was very much a science fiction fan in his own right, and from an early age developed a love for the written sci-fi classics popular in his time. Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds, Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles, and so forth. He was also a prolific comic book reader, extensively relishing many of the great heroes we all know and love, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, The Incredible Hulk, etc. My grandfather loved a lot of TV and movie science fiction too, such as The Outer Limits and The Twilight Zone, and several of my warmest memories of him, besides many of the fun things that grandsons do with their granddads, were sitting in his lap as a small boy and watching the movies and television shows of the day as he elaborated on some sci-fi concept or actor that he was fond of. This we did often, and for the occasion he'd make hamburgers and french fries, or sometimes hot dogs too, Homemade, though, none of that McDonald's or Burger King stuff, you understand. And we'd have a good old time, often well into the night, against my grandmother's wishes, I well remember, or until his little guy fell asleep in his arms and was carried off to bed without my sleepy little eye's knowledge. And one of the shows that he loved the most was Doctor Who. Now, I can't tell you exactly when my grandfather started watching Doctor Who, but what I do know is that he was already very familiar with the story before I was born, which led me to deduce later on in life that he began watching by at least the John Pertwee era, and by the time he introduced me to the story as a child, the Tom Baker years were already well underway. Tom Baker was my grandfather's favorite doctor, and as a consequence, this was the doctor I grew up watching, and whom, for me, became the embodiment of the Time Lords of Gallifrey. Of course, as a younger fellow, Grandpa himself also loved many of the radio dramas of yesteryear and introduced them to me in my childhood. Radio serials like Have Gun, Will Travel, Dragnet, Johnny Dollar, X-1, and certainly who can forget the late great Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater. This heritage, this legacy, left to me by my beloved grandpa resides with me to this day, and in many ways still forms the foundation of much of my own love of science fiction. There were other influences, naturally. On my own, I found Buck Rogers, Battlestar Galactica, the 1970s version, you, you understand, and Star Wars. And in my pre-adolescent years, my parents introduced me to the original Star Trek with William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. This sparked a sci-fi odyssey of its own, which in time led to shows such as Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, The X-Files, who can forget Mulder and Scully, of course, and the hit 1990s series Babylon 5. And it didn't just stop with the moving pictures of television. I continued to read, as I do to this very day, and that led me ultimately to writing stories of my own so as to give my own imagination room to play in. In that vein, I wrote many stories that were takeoffs on the places, people, and events of things I'd read or seen. This was, of course, what we would today call fan fiction. And I got a lot of praise for these stories, with various readers finding them both imaginative and true to the original characters on whom they were based. 
but they weren't mine. And this critique became the central observation of the man who was the second influence on my decision to write the Telaxion Particle. In the mid-1990s, I got the opportunity to work with a PhD biologist whom I met in my early 20s. Now, this was a man who was classically trained in the sciences, European educated, well-traveled, and quite worldly. He was also, like my grandfather, a well-read and viewed science fiction fan. I always called him Professor because he taught biology at the university level, but by the time I met him, he was very much near retirement. Now, knowing his love of science fiction like myself, I chanced giving him a few of my stories to read to see what he thought. And mind you, at this point in my life, I wasn't really serious about writing a lot of stuff. I wrote as I was inspired to write, based on an angle of some story that intrigued me enough to explore it further. You know, when I gave him my stories, it took the professor about mm, two invested weeks or so to read through them and to really absorb them and, and have a, a go at understanding what was going on. And having the great respect for his opinion that I did, I eagerly awaited his thoughts. Well, one day he returned and with a very sober look on his face, handed my stories back to me. And based on this, I thought to myself, oh my God, he hates them, I suck. Well, slowly, with a very chagrined disposition on that day, I accepted them back and I asked him, very humbly. What do you think, Professor? Now, calmly, he reached for a cigarette in his shirt pocket, lifted it to his mouth, lit it, looked at me and said in a very New England accent, Kid, I like your writing. You've got talent. Well, I'm sure you can imagine my instant relief at hearing a man of such esteemed stature tell me that he liked what I had to say. Well, yay for me, right? But then came the next line. He looked straight at me, his eyes growing bigger at my baby face smile, and he said, but I got a problem with him. Uh-oh, here it comes, I thought. So still frozen in place, I asked, what's that, Professor? And he said to me, this isn't yours. This is somebody else's. He pointed at me with a stern right hand finger and said, I want to read your story. I want to see what you have to say. He told me that people would be far more interested in that than any take that I had on other people's ideas. Well, I took that thought to heart that day, but it really didn't firm up in my mind until about 2007 when I began putting together my notes and story ideas for what would eventually become the Telexion particle. And it was then that what this professor said to me all those years ago suddenly flashed back into my mind. And then it began to cement and took on a special place in my heart at that point. This was the time that I took his words seriously, in other words. And thus the Telexion particle at that point became a process of putting inspiration into action until action became reality. And in 2012, that reality culminated in the publication of my first novel, The Telaxion Particle, Meditation One, Shroud of Shadows. This was my take, my look at the world, in my own words, of which I hope both my granddad and my old teacher would be proud. Now, as I mentioned, as a child, I was exposed to both written and spoken word fiction, reading the great ones like Arthur C. Clarke, Ray Bradbury, Isaac Asimov, etc. I absorbed the basics of characterization, such as physical descriptions, emotional context, how to show versus tell, how to describe an environment from a character's perspective, how to use point of view, grammar, punctuation, all of the basics of writing that anyone would have learned in school, but also that anyone choosing to tell a story should know. But I also gleaned a great deal about characterization by listening to stories being told. And the most influential source for this was in fact old time radio. Just as our grandparents and great grandparents when they were children, listening to old time radio shows exercised my imagination 
by allowing me to immerse myself in the story in a way that television simply did not. It asked me to put myself into the shoes of a character by forming an image in my mind of how they looked based on description alone. To, for example, smell the residue of gunfire wafting in a room. To feel the wind of an axe cutting the air. It painted a word picture backed by sound effects that put me, the listener, squarely into the action. I was not merely observing the action, as one does with television. I became a part of it. And this form of total immersion ramped up my enthusiasm for listening, so that when I augmented this fascination with reading, I often found myself acting out the parts I read, or alternatively, reading them aloud in dramatic fashion. This helped further cement the lessons I was subconsciously absorbing, so that when I later began to actually study writing technique, much of what I was learning had already become second nature. However, this didn't mean that active learning of formal writing principles wasn't a good thing, and it doesn't mean that it wouldn't be a good thing for any prospective new writer. In fact, it would be, because learning the rules enables you to better know where and when they can be bent or broken, but then easily returned to afterward. So I highly recommend studying formal writing technique. It will give anyone a firm foundation on which to hone their, their skills, to hone their technique, to find their own writing voice, and ultimately strengthen their overall ability. But there is more, because learning to write in a process with a structure in mind also gave me the tools to better understand how to guide both myself and my reader toward a pre-planned destination of my choosing. So, for example, I learned how to write or to explore character motivation over a long-range arc. I learned how to use minor characters to highlight and augment the main character's storylines. And I learned how to let the reader explore the story with me while simultaneously bearing in mind that I am, in fact, the director of the play. That is, I recognize that as the writer, it's my job to guide the reader where I want them to go, but simultaneously not to insult their intelligence along the way or their maturity. Now, multiple sources helped me learn how to do this. Reading other successful writers, that is, reading their stories, some of which I've already highlighted. By allowing other writers to critique my work and me, conversely, critiquing theirs, studying the notes and techniques of successful writers, and reading books on the subject of, that is, reading books about how to write. And of course, without a doubt, nothing beats continued practice, practice, practice. We've discussed my inspirations. We've talked about my training and indoctrination. So at this point, I'm sure you're curious to know what the Talaxion particle is about. Well, on the front end, I characterize Talaxion with three primary words, conspiracy, revenge, power. On the back end, that is at the conclusion of the story, I summarize it with three different words, evolution, transcendence, wisdom. Now, what's this all mean? Well, let's take them one at a time. Conspiracy. The Talaxion Particle is a story about a powerful, entrenched conspiratorial force that is bent on destroying its main civilizational enemy using assorted covert forms of warfare, economic, biological, military, social, political, and so forth. And while the tip-top members of the conspiracy themselves remain hidden, the tools of their warfare are employed by their agents scattered across the galaxy in which my story is told, both wittingly and unwittingly. Revenge. There is a principal motivation to the conspiracy's actions, the consummation of a millennia-old vendetta, thousands of years in planning and execution. It is a long-range strategy of deception and patience that spans generations, encompasses multiple species, and stretches across the very stars themselves. Power. I define the control sought by the conspiracy as power without limit, rooted in force, and concluding in absolute domination. It is a power seeking the ultimate control of life itself and the authority to exercise that power without regard to laws, rules, morals, or standards. 
These three pillars, conspiracy, revenge, and power, represent the existential dilemma upon which the Talaxion particle rests, and forms the nucleus around which all our central characters' actions proceed. Now, on the other side of the coin are evolution, transcendence, and wisdom, and without getting too deep into their application in Talaxion, let us say that these words balance the Talaxion equation and represent the story's existential solution. In fact, the Talaxion particle's very name is directly tied into this solution, so it is my desire that as I present these fundamental questions, fundamental answers will also be forthcoming. So, make no mistake, like all the great sci-fi that has preceded it, the Talaxion particle is an exploration of the human condition and of our evolving place in the universe. It is a story that considers the dark side of human nature, but in the end asks us to shed the excesses of great hatred and destruction so that we may strive for that more noble, more empowering end to which our ancestors strove in their quest to build ever superior levels of human civilization and accomplishment. Put more simply, the upward reach that is at the heart of all mankind is indeed at the heart of the Talaxion particle. Undoubtedly, some of you are asking by now, so where are you in your epic tale? Well, to date, three stories have been written and published, another completed and not yet published, and another two stories are currently works in progress. The story is divided into five main parts, and at present an unknown number of subparts. And I say this because, <laughs> well, <laughs> interestingly enough, I say this because although Talaxion is planned out with a definite beginning, middle, and end, as a writer, I've learned that one must be open enough to allow for fluidity and changes in the continuity of the story. Talaxion, like any tale, has evolved, and any writer worth the salt will tell you that his or her story will invariably go in directions that he or she didn't consider because the characters made decisions the writer never fathomed or plot circumstances were changed, etc. And I gotta say that with a story like this being so immense, there are many characters who constantly present themselves to me all the time saying, pen my part in this saga, or flesh this portion of the existential threat and resolution out some more. And I'm paying a lot of attention to that, strongly, to contemplate where that can be done without losing focus on the central characters whose part in the story must be told. And so the plan is five primary stories, which I call my meditations, and the unnumbered coda sections, which are the conclusions to a portion of the stories told in the main line. In the codas, I focus on a specific character or a specific set of characters, as opposed to the meditations, where the more consequent questions are regarded and an ensemble of characters come together to help us deliberate on those questions as readers. The Talaxion particle has been called science fiction at its best. It's received praise and accolades for its good writing, the depth of its ideas, and its creativity. And I do indeed believe that science fiction at its best is that sci-fi that provokes within us the desire, yes, even the need, to ponder those profound questions of existence and to seek answers to them. And along the way, we infuse a huge dose of fun at the same time. Now, for those readers who've taken time out of their lives to delve into my work and told me how much they enjoyed it, but never given any kind of formal review, I thank you with heartfelt sincerity. But with this video, I also want to invite you all to join me on the Talaxion adventure and to extend an open hand for your critiques and constructive criticism of the story. I invite you to purchase Talaxion at Amazon.com. All of my presently published stories are available there in both digital download and printed editions. And I welcome, in fact, encourage your formal reviews at Amazon, on your personal websites, on your social media accounts, in videos, blogs, sci-fi newsletters, and anywhere else you may choose. Now, whether your reaction is positive or negative is beyond my control, and I assure you that I seek no such control. But thumbs up or thumbs down, it is my desire to see you react. Because when you do, 
it means that something has been touched within you. And as a writer, that is imminently better than no reaction at all. If you wish to communicate with me personally, this and future videos on the Talaxion Particle will remain available here on YouTube, and you may reach out to me directly at the email address which you see on screen. So, you can see from this brief overview that the Talaxion Particle is a story of big ideas that explores big questions and offers big answers. And as a consequence of it being about big ideas, it is a long, winding narrative that takes the reader on a very substantive and thoughtful journey. Simultaneously, it asks those questions not just from the perspective of the powerful, the learned, and the protected, but also from the viewpoint of the layman, the prosaic, the humdrum but with insult and disregard toward none. To the contrary, Talaxion begs us to ponder that we're all important in the grand ultimate scheme. And it is my hope and desire that you will join me in exploring these great questions of existence in my story, my meditation on the human species, the Talaxion particle. Until next time, science fiction fans, press on toward the upward reach of mankind. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my books at Amazon.com and join me on the Talaxion adventure. Thanks for watching.